Hey guys, it's Kevin. Today we're gonna to talk about the Epson driver chip. What is driver chip? You have those microelectronics and their voltage is really little. But to be able to drive the printhead voltage is 42 volts. Your car battery is 16 volts, right? So you have the need to use this little current to control the bigger current. Here you can see a line here. Normally, the line is separating the low voltage side and to the high voltage side. In this video, we're going to cover what is driver chip and show you how it works and how to test it. Then we're going to pull up some board and try to test them. Again, the video is shot in the lab, and so there'll be some background noises. Sometimes you have a nice L1800 printer and that just print blanks. So the printer can power up, no problem. But when you print, it just blank. So you do a head cleaning and you can see the ink come through the ink tube and dump into the waste tank. So that means the printer is not completely clogged and also your cabin station is working fine. But you still get blank. So the main board is not sending signals to the printhead. And one thing can stop it is the fuse. Maybe you get the fuse blown so the electricity didn't go to the printhead. It may be as this F1 fuse does the fuse for the printhead. Maybe that fuse got blown out. I turn this multimeter on and I set to beeping mode. Whenever I connect and it should beep. If I put on both sides of this fuse, and you can see it beeps, so this fuse is good. If this fuse is blown, so you will get a oil. And if you need a replacement, I'm going to put a link above and also in the description, you can get a replacement of this fuse. Okay, so this fuse checked okay, and maybe this chip got blown out. I have to say there's not only one way to test this chip. And today we're going to do a quick checking that I'm going to tell you if the chip is blown out or not. If it's blown out, we're going to replace it. If it's not blown out, it still can be bad. I'm going to cover in later of this video about everything tests okay, but it's still bad. We run a small repair shop in North Carolina, and uh, if you cannot figure out, you can always uh, send your board in and let us repair it. I'm going to cover this chip. SOP 28 means there are 28 legs. Each side is 14 legs. And this chip is used for 1430 L1800, and the model number is EO9A7218. So if you go to bchtechnology.com and just type in EO9, you're going to see this 218A and 418A. So EO9 is 14 legs, so there are 28, and the 418 is 24 legs. That means each side only gets 12 legs. I got the 12 legs because of this 41 I use for four color printers and 21A use in the six color printer so that you get more legs. And if you need this SC chip, I'm gonna also put a link above and also I'm gonna put a link in the description. So for this chip, you notice there's a little quitter here. That's mark where's the first pin. For a chip which you have a leg on both sides that normally use a circle to uh, indicate which one is the first leg so this first leg this second leg and uh, uh, usually two rows you go counterclockwise so you go one two three four and uh, until 14 then you wrap around and uh, 15 16 17 so i draw this uh, in excel <coughs> represent the chip here's the dot so we'll get a first leg to 14 leg, and then we go counterclockwise, 15 to 28. And just for me, because I usually measure from the bottom, so I like to just mark 1 to 14, 1 to 14. For example, this one is third one from the bottom. So this is the chip, okay? I put the absence data sheet on the left. And the inside the square is what is the, what is this pin for, and the outside is the pin number. Inside we have a digital input from zero to nine, so that's ten input. The pin number is from one to five, 
So I mark it as green, 1 to 5, and 24 to 28, 24 to 28. So those are data pins. You have a really strong current it might strike through the chip so those data pins or other pins that's not supposed to connect to ground and now it's connected to the ground something melted and this is the whole basis of our test today and when we look at the chip and let's find the ground here's the ground and here's the ground when you put a multimeter on the ground and you test the pin 20 and you should have a beep because 20 is connected to the ground Okay, let's go over this. So 23 and 6, they both clock pins, so they should not beep because they, they are not the ground. 7, 7, 8, 7 is reset, 8 is standby, and 21 is connect to the ground. 21, so we mark as green. And 22 is a 3.3 .3 volts input and 22 doesn't connect to the ground so i so i just mark it as white and 20 connect to the ground 21 is test 20 is ground test and the ground those two connect to ground okay so 17 18 and 19 they are the npn and the pmp and the feedback so 17 18 19 17 18 19 those doesn't connect to the ground and 42 volts goes into num pin number 15 and that doesn't connect the ground and this one connect ground is pin number 16 is here see the NC and 16 connects ground and then you have those two 19 connect to the ground and the 14 connect to the ground and then we have again we have MPN feedback and the PMP and those three with this knowledge, we just mark out all the pins that are going to beep in green. I'm going to mark other NPM, PMP in other colors so we can troubleshoot the other things later. I'll take a snapshot of this picture and then just post on the top of my video. And so it will help you to identify which pin should beep. Okay, let's try it. We're going to find where the ground is. For the ground, one trick is you find a large piece of metal, for example, this guy here, or even this guy here, and then you'll find a big tower that look like a water tower. It is a capacitor. And see, all the powers, they show you where the ground is. So this one's here, and this one's here. Let me see if I get a tower. So this ground is here. So let's pick up this guy, flip over. So we put one in here. and uh, we'll touch the, this big silver. Okay, so it beeps. That means this big silver can be used as ground. Okay, let's check this guy, see if we can use that. Yeah, so either this one and this one can be used as ground. So if I touch both, it's gonna beep. Yeah, that's all ground. And with that said, when you test a chip, I want you to reverse your hand put the positive on the ground, okay? Uh, for the L1800, if they have a ditch here, I usually just put my thing here, lazy, okay? So I can free up one hand to do other things. We start from bottom, number 14, and uh, that's NC through the beep. Yeah, that beeps. And uh, then we have a uh, PNP and PN feedback. Three, three of those should not beep, okay? And uh, the next one is ground and the ground number nine and the number ten from bottom number five one two three four five beep okay and the rest of the way should not beep yep okay left side is checked and the right side two three four five okay after the from bottom the second beam beeped and uh, we can go up uh, three more, and uh, only uh, from bottom only number six. One, beeps. two, three, four, five, six. Beep, and a beep. Okay, and the rest should not beep. 
doesn't beep. Okay, it just passed over this rough test. Is, by the way, this is a brand new motherboard. Okay, now we're gonna go over some board with different problems. Okay, and this is the FR board. Let's with this one. Okay, this one is a bad chip. However, it can pass our test today, and we call it BC BCH slow. What happened is inside it is not burned out, but the signal get wear out, so the signal is not strong enough to drive. And so the feedback is slow, and this one prints, but it prints really slow. So the this one should beep. Yeah, good. And the next three shouldn't. One, two, three. And next two should beep. Uh, the rest of them shoot out. Okay, so on the right side, first one should not beep and set by second one does. And the next three should not. Then six, seven from the bottom should beep. And the rest of them shouldn't. Okay, so you can see even if it's a bad one, it can pass this test. This test only check if uh, you got really big current and burn through the chip. Okay, now with this one. For this chip, you're gonna see the pin number seven and the number eight. They okay. both beeps. They shouldn't beep. This board is gas drag through. This chip need to be replaced. Okay, we're ready for that board. The problem with this board is none of the pin beeps. <laughs> Actually, the chip is good and the problem exists elsewhere. Either you didn't mount the chip correctly or the other place get burned there you have an open circuit. What has the chip first? What do you know? This uh, chip doesn't connect the ground, so we put our positive on the NC pin number 14 to test the other pins. And let's connect 9. Okay. And connect to. Yeah, low battery. And connect to number 2. And connect to number 20. You can see this chip works. However, this chip is not connected to the ground. And the reason is you get something burn. Oh, look like this guy. Look at this guy. You get things burn around it. So to troubleshoot it, you need to test down the line and test their connectivity. So you need a diagram to see what was around it. I don't think I have a schema for L1800, but if you go to bchtechnos.com and search for 1430, and this reference for teaching 1430 is the really similar mainboard, actually the same mainboard, just programmed differently in the ROM. You can see what's down the road, and uh, that will help you troubleshoot it. You trace those along the way, and you're going to find where the short is, and then you can fix this board. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Visit us at www.bchtechnology.com. Oh, it's really low battery.com uh, or locally at Greensboro, North Carolina. Cheers.